Now Adam suggested why don't we also do study with water to see how Tesla light systems also influences the imprint onto water. So we have water from the lab to which we have a baseline reading and then the uh, this glass of water was placed alongside the DC frequencies of the Tesla coil and kept over there for now uh, almost uh, it was 11 minute cycle then after the 11 minute cycle it has been now uh, in the in that state after the system was shut off for another 15 20 minutes so now we have the glass back in the lab of which I took a uh, uh, syringe and in this syringe now we have full headspace of the water that was influenced by the Tesla light. Now it is going in through this sleeve and we are going to cascade a drop there. So we look right down at the bottom and we are going to suspend a drop right down. Can you see it? Yeah. And now this drop is going to be just over above the electrode about 1.5 to 2 millimeters mm. and there it sits we put the cap on the top and now we come to this screen over here and in this screen uh, we will begin our capturing of data uh, so start video file here we go ready so here is what we are looking at. This is and what we are actually now uh, capturing is a continuous what we call a dynamical image of that droplet of water suspended and we are uh, doing a 10 second reading at 15 frames per second and we are going to do this in five sequences. We just did sequence number one so now we go to sequence number two. So this is again a, a dynamical cascading of photons and electrons onto the droplet that is providing this image. We take our third reading and uh, there the fourth reading and the fifth reading. So a total for each sequence when we do such water studies we get a baseline of about 750 uh, dynamical images of the droplet. Then we can... Uh, uh, okay so now this is done. Uh, this is done we can close this file and now we can go and look and see what the data is showing us. And this takes us into a program that was also designed by Dr. Korotkov uh, called the Scientific Laboratory Program. This is the baseline water we are gathering. Okay, and we look at baseline water. Now we have again in each of these panels is a uh, 150 frames. So 150 times 5 is 750. So if we want to look at one of them and we can see that there is a dynamical image of the baseline of the lab water. You see that clearly? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So that is sample number one. Mm. And now we go to our sample number two and we Tesla's and charged water and we have one through five open okay and now we have see this collective information now we will go to a screen where we can begin its calculations so there will be a total of uh, 1500 uh, dynamical images 750 from each baseline to uh, <clears throat> uh, 750 of the charged water so we are going to look at some parameters parameter of area 
average intensity. Area is the number of pixels. Intensity is the level of its photon discharge activity. And we are going to look at entropy. So which means it also gives us the activation of what is transpiring with the liquid. So now we go and we put them into calculation mode. Calculate. So once all this took a handful of uh, researchers to sit down and do, and you would get the data maybe about uh, uh, four days later. Now you will get the data in about uh, less than one minute. How's that sound? Yeah, that's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> And then once we get this data, then we can observe its various uh, uh, influence, how the uh, Tesla lights influence the water and the information that the water in turn then is providing us based upon these three parameters. Okay, so here is one statistical curve. And from that statistical curve, let us look at uh, very precise activity. Number one, we can see that this is the baseline water of area and this is the water after the charge so just to just to give a value we can see that the water the area of the water is very consistent all the way this is time time on the x axis and area which is the number of pixels on the y axis so uh, here we see that a mean value so let's go like the midpoint here and the mean value here is roughly about 980. Hmm, 980. And the mean value after the charge is 2,281. So, of course, so the glow of the water is tremendously much higher than where it was to begin with. Let's look at one more parameter. What would be the average intensity? Average intensity here shows uh, that the uh, base was about 113 and from 113 it went up to 150. So it's still well beyond the 10% and so that is again supportive to show that the influence of the uh, Tesla's uh, of Tesla lights has uh, definitely raised the number of pixels so it has increased the process of informational capture. So the capacity of the water to retain its environmental influence. Mm. Uh, key point. Then uh, along with that intensity, so which is the brightness characteristic, has also been enhanced. Mm. Now we look at entropy. So initial, initially, which is the, uh, this line, we can observe the flow of so we can look at the peaks and valleys and we can see that there's a lot of peaks and valleys going all the way across hmm. now let us see if those peaks and valleys are minimized or have they been smoothened out a little and we see that there is definitely a smoothening process that has occurred you see that Taran? yes i can hmm. uh, so the, so here we can see some very clear influence of the Tesla, the Tesla uh, lights to the absorption capacity of the water. Okay, then of course we can go on to various other parameters uh, because uh, there are various other data fields that show and then we can calculate all this, you see, all this data of calculation for all the 150 uh, frames in each segment all the way up to uh, the 750 and then we look at all the values here see each one independent values that are calculated computed and now we want to generate a word report I can go here click and I can generate a word report on this uh, study that we just did and now from there we can come to many inferences and it's uh, very clear number one that there has definitely been an affirmative contribution to influence of Tesla's lights. Uh, so that is supportive, supportive from chakra state uh, for alignment of all chakras, supportive uh, from the energetic uh, flow of information in the diagram that we saw through all the organ systems, thereby also enhancing the capacity of left-right brain to uh, 
to come to align to a field of mutual coherence. That is at least the attribute of the data we observed. And third, the energy field. In, uh, from the parasympathetic and the sympathetic field, we saw that areas that showed depletion, they were strengthened. So overall, there was affirmative outcome that we observed from the data that we captured. Now, as far as the water, we see that about uh, 25 minutes or so after the uh, uh, Tesla, Tesla coil was stopped, we gather data on the water. And of course, the water already has a quite a strong baseline. But what we saw was that the, uh, uh, the collective uh, uh, process of the water retaining the level of increased biophoton exchange within also is enhanced. And thereby, we can also see that the sharper edges that the water has also began to get smoothened. So now we are going to have a lovely moment where I'm going to remove the, uh, the uh, syringe. And Aaron and myself, we are going to share the photon-induced water. So thank you. From your knowledge from using this, knowing that we're made mostly of water, mm -hmm. and we're going to drink this water, what happens then? What's your, what's your hunch? Now, that, the question you asked does not, uh, uh, does not render itself to an answer that can be kept inside a finite field. Because we, this is a preliminary read. When ultimately we induce this water so that we drink the water, and then we are able to observe the characteristic that the water in turn how it supports the complete energy field of the system. We know. I mean, there are studies done in a recent documentary that was released here in the United States based upon a water conference in Moscow from years ago. I may have told you about it. So from this conference, it showed that when we look at structure, we speak of intelligence in the water. And the intelligence in the water is the capacity of the water to retain information of its environment, retain information that is uh, induced to the water as prayer. We have seen dear uh, Masa Dr. Masaru Emoto-san has really paved the way for a broader outreach to enhance the global, um, let us say, consciousness project. To recognize we are water, our thoughts influence the water within us. Now, we are dealing with some strong factors. We are dealing with certain levels of wave frequencies from the Tesla, from the Tesla lights. So then how the, how the water, the retention of the information drunk by people, how does that also support the energy field? So what we are looking at is some longer process of application to which to really look at it from a deeper level, let's say a clinical, a clinician, a researcher, a practitioner can follow a group of people as a, as a pilot study to induce water like this in a 10-minute cycle. Water where you have a baseline. And then you do a baseline of the person or the subjects who are, who are participating in the study. Have them drink this much water. And by drinking this much water, 20 minutes later, again, calibrate and look at the data. And we've done uh, lots of studies like this with uh, uh, structured waters that we will call now intelligent waters. And we've seen uh, very uh, affirmative outcomes, especially when it comes to the um, organization of the hemispheres in the brain, organization of the capacity of uh, the sympathetic, parasympathetic fields to uh, um, be to be propelled in, in, a, in a manner that is very conducive, thereby minimizing the level of uh, inertia or the level of resistance. Because now the flow inside the field, the energy field, will uh, have less um, impedance to it. So these are, all, these are all favorable attributes to explore. And if we see that it does support the uh, human energy field, and we are predominantly water, 
So if we do are able to do this with water, then we can address some uh, greater questions to life. Can this water in turn be, uh, how, how will it provide in irrigation? Uh, how will it, uh, what will be the outcome in the growth of plants? Mm. Uh, because ultimately we are dealing with the energies of cosmos. These are cosmic energies. Uh, they are prevalent in the bandwidth of electromagnetic fields that we know. Mm. Uh, so when these harmonics, these, these uh, informational exchanges are uh, enhanced, can it then ultimately bring together a global coherence, which is a global mind? Because if our uh, <clears throat> hemispheres are aligned, then coherent thinking is the outcome of a coherent mind, is it not? Mm. Homeostasis. Uh, then, then we become uh, creative, we become uh, extremely supportive for well-being, well-being of life, well-being of collective consciousness, not only in communities. Then we begin to see a community not isolated as a little village in a town, but rather a community as a global community. And hence the nature of our mind, which we have seen from multiple studies that were done from the 70s, that we, we align ourselves to a global coherence which ultimately leads us to a cosmic awareness, which then brings us to a much broader field to our signifying the intelligence of the human being from the homo sapio state to the homo luminoso state. Hence, cells are awakened, cells are potentialized, and these are all now known factors in the study of epigenetics in the field of medicine and such uh, breakthroughs in science are now being taught in various medical schools. So let us explore all these areas with affirmation, knowing that let us not be bound by any process or prince, but align ourselves so that we can clearly see how well-being can be enhanced for our global community in life. Thank you. Well, thank you.